Good evening. My name's Dermot Kelly, and tonight I'm going to be talking with William O'Leary in Ireland, and I'm in Adelaide, South Australia, and we've been friends for six, seven years, I believe. So without further ado, I'll introduce you to William. How are you doing today, William? How are you doing, Dermot? Nice to see you. To see you. Nice. Yes. Got yeah. us a tattoo? And would you like to tell our viewers um, how we first met? Because uh, <coughs> a bit of background first would help the viewers uh, to understand how we interact as well as your story. Because tonight is all about your story. Or it's not tonight for you, but it is for me. Hmm. Well, let the refer go in. It'll be soon the other way around. <laughs> <laughs> Don't start. Okay. 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 Yeah, I know we've been we've been good friends now for what? Eight years. Eight years. Okay. It was seven or eight. Is it more? What am I talking about? Much more I, than that. What I think I... we're I think we're both exaggerating, but never mind. Uh, I think it was um when I was interviewed with Alfred Weber, yeah. Yeah. you saw yeah. you saw the video and yeah. you contacted yeah. me by email. Yeah, how long ago was that? Without checking the email, I've got no idea, to be honest. But um, well, well, that's a handy start. <laughs> <laughs> what I would like to know, though, is it ended up in my junk file, and normally I would just delete anything in the junk file. But obviously, um, being aware of spirit guides and spirituality the way I am, I just knew that this particular email I had to open. And when I opened it, I realized it was genuine. And I thought I'd better answer. And I answered. And we, I believe we Skyped not long after. And we, we chatted for, crikey, it was at least four hours. At least four hours. First time we'd ever met. And it was like, wow. And I remember saying to you halfway through, it was probably two, two and a half hours in, and between the screen and myself, I saw the numbers one triple zero, which is a thousand. And I distinctly remember saying to you, um, do you know, it feels like it's been a thousand years since we have connected. Is that true? And I believe your exact words were, I believe so, Mr. Kelly. So would that have anything to do with why you contacted me? Or, or did you just see my video and thought, I'll give this guy a bit of a run for his money? <laughs> so, no, uh, it's what you actually said, Dom. It? And uh, it resonated a lot with me. Right. <clears throat> so I, it was the first time I ever did it, by the way. It was made contact with anybody. Yeah. I've only done it twice. One was more recent, but you were the very first. So uh, I, I, I and sent, did you I ever sent regret that? <laughs> Obviously not. <laughs> That's a, that, that is a loaded question now, Mr. Kelly. That's a loaded question. <laughs> no, actually, no, 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 no. We, yeah. we hit it off. We hit it off straight away. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And and I believe since we've realised why, but we'll keep that private for now. Mm -hmm. but, um, okay. Well, it will come so, out. Sorry? It will come out. Oh, will eventually. it? Okay. Oh, yeah. Yeah. There you go. The truth will always surface. Absolutely. Okay, so I've already explained how the first Skype call and how you, you spoke with me. Um, so I guess we'll talk a little bit about your story because you contacted me recently to say that you've got something important to, t to say to the world and to individuals, but there's, there's got to be some sort of a background for mm -hmm. people to hear about so that they can put the puzzle together. So um, is there anywhere in particular that you want to start? Um, I mean, I can give you an example that you gave me many years ago, but is there anywhere that you'd want to start right now? 
Yeah, let's go way back. <coughs> I, I think I need to state first of all that I have nothing to sell here. I have nothing to flog. I am not promoting anything, absolutely nothing. And I do not need fame, not at my age. Yeah. I don't want fame. So everything that is coming is coming pure, yeah. straight from the heart. So having said that, <coughs> and I may as well tell you now that I do not lie. And if, I, and if I'm asked a question, I will either answer it if I can correctly. Otherwise, I won't. <clears throat> so if you keep that in mind, that everything I'll say always comes from the heart yes. and it's never a lie. Okay? So if I can go back to when I was eight years of age, um, <clears throat> there was a river that was maybe 20 minutes, half hour walk from, from my home. Yep. And uh, one day I went... Uh, I seem to have tagged along with my um, older brother. <clears throat> and uh, don't ask me why, because younger brothers don't usually tag along with older brothers, especially when the older brother has got all his friends <clears throat> and they're going swimming. Yeah. Anyway, we, we went to this river. Oh, this river is, only, is a small river, but it had been dammed up by the local factory. You know, just, they'd built a dam with a hatch at one end. So when they needed water, they would lift the hatch up and the water will come out and flow straight to the factory. Otherwise, the water is just bypassed. Yeah. So <clears throat> this became our local swimming pool, if you want, if you want a bit of water. And there was a concrete wall where they had built it up, concrete wall. But on the other, on the other side from the concrete wall, from the, the path side, there was a, just a rock face, you know, just rock. And it goes up about, what, 50, 60 feet, <clears throat> maybe a bit more. So they would go, my brother was a terrific swimmer, and so were his friends, but very good swimmers. But as I couldn't swim a bloody stroke. So I still can't figure out why I was suddenly tagged along. Yeah. So there I was, standing on my own. My brother and his friends were busy enjoying themselves, diving off of this cliff face into the, into the pool, which was pretty deep. So I was never able to see the bottom. And, uh, <clears throat> but on, on the wall that had been built, they had put a, a maintenance ladder on the inside. That was a permanent fixture. So I sat down on the, you know, on the ladder, just to pass away in order to do something. So I sat down on the, on the ladder until the water came up to about here, okay? So yeah. my brother and his friends were on the opposite <clears throat> side, a bit to my left, so in actual fact, I was sort of out of view and uh, I was quickly forgotten about because they were so busy doing their own stuff, diving in and fooling around and <clears throat> forgotten about me. So there I was sitting on the ladder, walking up to here. And I remember I had the, um, the rung of the ladder around my arm. <clears throat> so I was sitting there, minding my own business. You know, just watching them fooling around. And the next second, all I knew was I was under the water. Completely submerged. And because I was now off of the ladder and my arm was around the upright, this was kind of a pivot. So I just pivoted around on the ladder. So now instead of facing out, I was facing back to where the ladder was attached to the wall. And I was now under the water, my arm was under the water, and I had gone beyond the point of being able to get the strength to pull myself back up. I didn't have the strength either to move back or do anything because I couldn't swim a stroke. I knew mm. if I released, I'd go straight down. But even at that age, at that time, I realized that I was in a, in a bit of a spot. I, and I, yeah. I remember rightly, it's, uh, I'm thinking, oh, I'm in serious trouble here. Yeah. There was no way I could move. Next second, I was back out of the water, sitting back up on the top rung of the ladder. And I looked around to see what had happened, who pulled me out. There was nobody there. My brother was still, and his friends were still on the other side, you know, diving off the cliffs, not realizing what just happened. <clears throat> so when I looked around, there was nobody there. 
So I, 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 well, I didn't, didn't make a big deal about it, but I was just aware of it. Yeah. But the thing was, <clears throat> I never said anything to anybody. I didn't say anything to my brother there and then. Never ever said it to him until about three years ago. I didn't even tell my friends. When I went home, I didn't tell my parents. Nobody. I kept that quiet until <clears throat> three, four years ago, maybe five years now. So I, I always kept that quiet. But I, even from then, <clears throat> I always kind of knew that I was watched over. That something went on, but I never let it bother me. Yeah. It happened. Okay, that's happened. I am aware of it, and I've never forgotten it. Even now, I can still see myself under the water, up close to the wall like that, my nose touching the wall, the water up to here. I've never forgotten it. Well, well two questions, William. Um, mm. <clears throat> was the water actually rising? Do you think it was rising, or, were you, or did you actually slip down a bit? No, the, the water doesn't rise. You know, the water will only come to a level, and then right. it will go to the, auto, to, to the automatic outflow. Right. So, so, so you, you feel that you actually slipped down a bit? Oh, I'd slipped off of the, not down, but off of the ladder. I was completely off of the ladder. I'd spun around on the upright. Right. Not the other stuff. I'd spun around. So now I was off of the rungs. Yes. I was, I was hanging on with just this much. My feet were not off of the ladder. I was just hooked on with my arm. So I didn't have the leverage or the power or the strength to swing back around, or the intelligence maybe, to swing back around, to get back up. I didn't so, have it. <clears throat> so, so did you feel that you lost consciousness while you were under no. the water? No. No? No. No. So if you didn't lose consciousness, you can't remember struggling to get back up? No? No. All I knew was that I was in deep trouble. That's so the only thing that I realised. We've often, we've often heard in, in, you know, well, I have, where, you know, people have been in car accidents or, or any type of accident and miraculously people are saved when they should have died. So mm -hmm. I relate this to, uh, for example, soul contracts, <clears throat> where we have many exit points in the life that we're going to live and we choose at which points we're going to leave. Now, obviously, you, you weren't supposed to go, so you didn't. So they had to step in, divine intervention, to mm -hmm. save you, because that was a genuine accident, obviously. And was they, it? I, they, I've often wondered about that. Gen only recently I started thinking about that. Was it an accident? Was it, yeah. some, I, I don't know. Yeah. To me, it always seemed like I was, because the funny thing was, I, never, I don't remember actually slipping. I don't yeah. remember going, oops. The only thing I remember is being under the water. That's all I remember. I don't remember actually slipping. So Interesting. <clears throat> so after this experience, did you actually have any more that was similar where you were still conscious, but, something happened out of the norm? Yeah, well, it's only in hindsight me looking back that you kind of see everything yeah. happening in the sequences and you were never thinking too much about it at the time. No, <clears throat> but when I was do. around, yeah, when, when I was, must have been around the same age. Um, I may be a bit younger, I'm not too sure. But anyway, around the same age, I stood on the rusty nail the nail just went, in those days, we just had the, um, the flip-flop sandals. <clears throat> I was taken to the hospital. I don't remember getting a tetanus shot. That's the thing. But that night, I was in, at a very, very high fever. Yeah. Really, really high fever. And <clears throat> I remember my father, had my, uh, I had my leg out over the end of the bed. And he had my foot caught and he was holding, he was squeezing it tight. And uh, I don't know what happened or where the doctor came from, but suddenly there was a doctor there. And I, I can even now, I can still hear him saying, 
give me a scissors. I need a scissors. So my mom got a scissors, handed him the scissors, and he done something with the scissors. And that's all I'd remember at that time. He just done something with the scissors. And the next morning, but the next morning, I was fine. Happy chappy. Not a bother. Not a bother. It was only recently that my elder sister uh, said to me, um, when I was speaking about that particular time, she said, you know, she said, you were supposed to die that night. I said, really? She said, yeah, we were all expecting you to die. You should have died from poison. Ah. So that is something out of the ordinary, isn't it? Yeah, I never told that to anybody. Yeah. Wow. So yeah. how did this affect you as a youngster, having these sorts of experiences? Not a lot. Not a lot. Okay. Not a lot. But the one thing I never was, I, I could never seem to fit in. I was always trying to please other people yes. to yes. try to try and fit in. Yes. Go around, go around with a group of other your pals and you're always trying to fit in, but you, you never quite make it. You're always on the outside. You're part of the group, but you're not the... Yes, you're not part of... You're not the flavour yeah. of the month, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> you, you were kind of always the, the fellow at the back. Yeah. That's the way life went with me. And the other thing was, I always hated school. Oh. I hated school with a passion. I absolutely detested going to school. And which, now I understand why. Yes. But back then, whoa, why did I hate school? Any opportunity I got, I was going in the other direction. <laughs> well, we're very similar in that aspect because I hated school as well. Yeah. And, and I too was in the group, but I was never the focus. I was always mm -hmm. the one in the back, mm -hmm. yeah. like yourself. Yeah. And I yeah. was going to ask you, did you feel different from all the other kids? Well, I think you've answered that because, yes, you did. You just wanted to fit in. But yes. how, how yeah. do you fit in when you yeah. know that there's something not the same. Yeah, you, you, when you know you can't kids. fit in. Yeah, but you, but you can't figure out why. How yeah. come I can't fit in? It, think just, you just accept things as, as you go along. Kind of, grow, you know, you just kind of fit in, make yourself fit in and accept things the way they are for you. And, and this is why, as we get older, we realise that there are pieces to the puzzle and we go, hang on a minute. And we look back in hindsight and we put it together mm. and we go, that's why it happened. Yeah. So you will never see the same post when you're, when you're there. You don't see the same post pointing along. It's Correct. only when you look back, you see all oh, the same post yeah. heading in your direction. Correct. Mm. So, yeah, the, 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 these things happen for a reason, as we know. Yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So are there any other experiences that follow on from this or... Is this, you know, I, I, I led a pretty normal life from then on. Um, the place where I was born, I was born at home, by the way. Every, I think the rest of my brothers and sisters uh, were born. And um, yeah, in, um, in the nursing home or the hospital. But I could never figure out why my eldest brother and my eldest sister always had, didn't have much time for me. You know, they, they, every chance they get, they, they pick on me, you know. And again, it was only recently that I discovered why. Apparently, when I was born, <clears throat> my mom said to my brother and sister, he's special. Uh -huh. So straight away, they go, oh, he's special. What, about, what, what are we? So they kind of resented that. Yeah, and yeah. always had, had that against me. Oh, he was a special. He was, but they never told me. It was only recently she said that to me, and yeah. then I said, "But you never knew why I was special." Then I told her, and she was, "Ooh." <laughs> <laughs> well, wow. My my own my elder sister is highly psychic. She's very very clairvoyant, but she never used it. I mean, she would have people coming into the house, coming into a room. She'd be looking at them, would know who they are, and they'd walk out through the walls constantly. But she never pursued it. 
Yeah. And I had a conversation with him. I said, you had a gift. You never used it. People were coming to you for help. And you, you, you just ignored it. She, but, yeah, she, I know that now. Yeah. But don't you find that, um, and, and I'm sure you have, because I, I, we have talked about this in the past, but the, the, as we uh, reincarnate, um, we come here for different reasons. Obviously, we're, we're all here to learn and to help one another, but some people are here on, on certain missions, and, you know, some people are here to entertain, some people are here to educate, some people are here to, to teach, some people are here to heal. Um, whatever that gift is, um, we, we all have free will, and it's whether we choose to use that free will or not as to whether it works or not. So not everyone that's incarnated with a mission actually fulfills that mission, as you know. Quite true, yeah, quite true. <clears throat> but those of us that wake up to a degree and join the dots and look back and see the signpost, it's then and only then that we can actually say, hang on a minute, What's going on here? And then we start tuning into our intuition, gut instinct, whatever it is, mm -hmm. and we realise, hang on a minute, I'm here to do something. So I guess that's why I think we resonate is because we both have similar views. I don't think we agree on everything, but um, I don't think anyone ever should. Absolutely, um, yeah. yeah. You know, if you can learn from one another, that's great. Absolutely fantastic. Mm. So, yeah. Okay. Yeah. When I was um, moving on, just when I was going to school or just after school, I said I wanted to become a doctor. Yeah. And uh, they just laughed at me. <laughs> You're a doctor. Forget about it. And, uh, well, I was always interested. I, I remember I used to get... Um, uh, a sheep's head <laughs> from the butcher to get a sheep's head yeah. and I start, I start slicing it open you know look at the eyes and all that I remember I, I would do that oh wow so I found it fascinating I used to play marbles <laughs> I, I, used, I used to play marbles as well don't get me wrong <laughs> well I, I was kind of over the marble stage yeah you know what? Yeah. yeah but I used to do it I used to I'd have a knife and I'd be trying to cut open the, the, the skull and all that. I think my mum and dad were totally disgusted at me doing this on the kitchen table. But <laughs> <laughs> Especially when they're well, trying to dish up dinner. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. So, yeah. So you always so, want to be a doctor. Interesting because, uh, you know, you were saying how, you know, you used to, cut a, a sheep's head and what have you but I mean my my father my grandfather my great grandfather were all shepherds uh, and oh yeah and and they they worked on on the uh, the farms uh, they looked after the uh, the cows and the sheep and they actually roamed around uh, I believe it was uh, Dublin Kildare and um, not Clendorkin, that's in Dublin, isn't it? Mm -hmm. um, Wicklow. Yeah. The three counties. And they, the family lived around that, that junction. And for years, they were slaughtermen and butchers uh, by trade. But because they lived in small communities, you know, they didn't, you know, do what the mass slaughtering that you do today. Uh, it was obviously for the village and nothing else. Mm -hmm. And um, and they used to obviously, you know, thank the Lord for providing food. So I don't want to upset any vegans here, but, um, you know, that's the way it was hundreds of years ago. So that's my heritage, but mm -hmm. I could never, I don't know why, but I could never do what you suggested. Um, I couldn't even you know, kill an ant or a fly or anything like that. It was just, I don't know why, but I do know why now because they're all living mm. beings. Mm. So whether it's, whether it's an insect, 
an animal or even a plant. You know, obviously, at some point in our lives, we've done something wrong, obviously. But the intentions were never to harm or to hurt. Yeah. And I think that that's resonated through my spirit. And, um, and I guess it resonates through your spirit too, because you mm. like to teach and you like to. Yeah, I love teaching. You yeah. love to heal as well. Um, not, more, I, not, more I, than, not more than teaching. I not love more teaching. than teaching. Okay. I would never thought the day would come when I would say, say, say something like that, but I always wanted to, be, to heal people. Yeah. I suddenly realized I was able to far more interested in teaching right. about spirituality. I was raised a Catholic. My house was, my, all my house was, I wouldn't say strict Catholic, but go to Sunday Mass. Yeah. Then to come around, you go to Mass in the, in the Lent. They used to say the prayers at night, the rosary one at night. And that was a laugh in itself. But I mean, that's, <laughs> that's, um, that was my upbringing. But what happened is that I seem to have um, developed a, a very special bond with Mother Mary. Okay. Right? And she was always very close to me. And I remember not long after I got married, I woke up in the middle of the night and she was standing right next to me. Right. I didn't see anything. I just looked and I said, all right. And I went back to sleep. I, I can still see her even now, like, that was in 1970, thereabouts. I still remember it. Turned around, there she was. I said, okay, I'm back to sleep. Fine, no big hoopa. I'm back to sleep. That was it. I don't get excited, overly excited. <laughs> I'll jump and say, what is this? Yeah. I don't do things like that for some reason or other. But there you go. Uh, yeah, where was I? <laughs> where were you? <laughs> well, you were, you were talking about um, Mother Mary, and you don't oh, get yeah. excited. You don't get excited <laughs> over that. I mean, yeah. I too was raised a Roman Catholic. Um, oh yeah, yeah, that's what I thought. Oh, yeah. So, were you a Roman Catholic or were you just a Catholic? I mean, I don't know the difference. Do you? No, well, it, it is Roman Catholic. Oh, okay. It is got Roman Catholic, and uh, so that was my upbringing. Yeah. Until when I um, I got married in the church. I was a right, proper, trimming, a righteous upbringing. Um, Catholic. Uh, Catholic. Yeah. Yeah. And until uh, one day I was in, in the church and uh, watching the priest. And I suddenly realized he doesn't know what he's fucking talking about. Pardon my French. He doesn't know what he's talking about. He hasn't got an absolute clue what he's saying. And he's talking a lot of bullshit. And that, so each time I go in there and I say, no, 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 this, this, this is not right. Yeah. This is not right. There's something definitely seriously wrong here. Remember at the time, um, there was no computers. Mm -hmm. So there was no internet. Correct. All the, Correct. All the books in the stores, the bookstores, were all, I knew all religion from left to right, all religion to this saint and to that saint and Blah de blah de blah de blah, yeah. and down in a little in the corner, right down in the corner, there might be one or two little self-help spiritual books. Correct. Yeah. So I didn't, you know, I had nothing to go on, but I knew this wasn't right. Yeah. Just this thing, just this thing, not right. There's something going on here. So I, I actually I switched off completely from it. I said, "This is not right. There's something going on that's not right." So that yeah. now the reason I'm bringing that up is that. I, I wasn't exactly a young man. So you're never too old to change. If I yeah. can do it, if I can do it, then there's no reason why everyone else can't do it, regardless of the age. Yeah. Regardless of age. And I was old. And if I'm able to change like that, but even though I'm supposed to be settled, oh, take your pipe there and sit in the corner and be a good little man and say, <laughs> smoke your pipe <laughs> that's not for me <laughs> it wasn't me <laughs> well here's the thing william here's the thing mm. right now i'm five six years of age and i was to do uh was it is it confirmation yeah, yeah. I think it, 
Yeah, confirmation, yeah. right? And to be honest with you, I could not understand having mass in Latin when we're in an English church. It never made sense to me at all. And then when they did English mass, I was like you. I'm thinking, what is this? This is now I'm you've got to imagine imagine this. My parents were, were, were Catholic. I was I was the eldest of six, but obviously before the, the others were born, um, I, I think I just knew intuitively that something wasn't right every time we went there. And at the age of six, I could feel a very dark presence, an entity in the church. Mm -hmm. And how do you explain that to your parents, you know, when you're that age? When you don't even know yourself what the hell it is, you know? So yeah. I've always known that there was something not quite right about this. So as always, I questioned, I asked so many questions, never got the answers because, like you said, there was nothing there to, to guide you or direct you. So you had to tune into your heart. Yeah. What's right? So, yeah, it was, um, and obviously yeah. I knew I was different, so obviously you would have known the same, you know. Yeah. So, yeah. I, so just, to fin just to finish out on that, yeah. when I was growing up, I was fascinated um, when we used to do the catechism classes at the time and to start teaching the catechism. I want to come to telling the, all the stories about all the parables, about all the healings that Jesus did, right? And I'll explain why I've done that maybe at another time. Um, <laughs> it doesn't resonate with me. Yeah. I would, I would sit there enthralled, even though I might have heard the story a hundred times, because it was he was speaking, and I would sit there attentively listening to what he said and what he did. I could never, ever get enough of that. And when the movies came out, and he was in the movies, we're talking about the movie that I've just got there. I, I would just spellbound, listen, what, what did he do? What did he do? What did he say? What did he do next? Even though I knew it all by heart, I couldn't get enough of it. Yeah. So I had, I also had this relationship with him, right? I, I would be enthralled. And then confirmation come up. I would know all the parables by heart. I would know everything he did. So as I got older, um, I developed a re relationship with him and Mother Mary. And yeah. I remember walk, oh, walking one day, um, I was a few years back, but I was married. And I used to talk to them like I'm speaking with you. Yeah. Right? And uh, as well, I even remember the spot where it happened. I was walking along a walk, there's a near Blarney Castle, if you ever heard, heard the Blarney Castle. I have, there's a yeah. walk. Yeah, there's a, a walk, walkway close by, and I was walking along there. The castle was in the background. And uh, I was chatting away to the two of them. And then suddenly he says, uh, Jesus says, uh, isn't there someone missing? I'm like, what? What do you mean? Who's missing? He says, isn't God missing? I said, hang on a minute. Hang on a minute. I said, hang on a minute. Hang on a minute. I have a hard enough time now, I said, dealing with you two, but don't bring him into the picture. I said, yeah. I couldn't handle that. Forget it. I said, forget it. Forget it. I couldn't handle it. I said, you two are fine. Yeah. What am I yeah. Doing that? I said, I'm quite happy with that. Thank you very much. Don't need anything else. I couldn't handle it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it happened, wow. didn't it? It happened. I was suddenly being brought more and more into contact with him until eventually uh, I came to realize that my connection to that side of it, to the source. Yeah. So, so no one actually, has, no psychic or no person has said to you, William, um, you're special, other than your mother, of course, uh, you're special, you've got a gift, blah, blah, blah. No. Um, no, you, you've always known in your heart and your relationship with Mother Mary. Yeah, um, <clears throat> that 
so so basically it's intuition that you you knew you were different and mm-hmm. there was something going on yeah so yeah, how, how does so how does this develop as you get older which end are you talking about the healing part of it is it no no I, i'm not i haven't mentioned anything about the healing. Oh. <laughs> I, i'm Sorry. just saying i'm just saying how does the story develop uh, as a well, person I, yeah. yeah, well, um, I just, I qualified in engineering. Yeah. And uh, funny enough, I didn't stay at engineering. I would go into it and I come out of it and I go in. I've had more jobs than most people had hot dinners. I mean, the, the amount of jobs that I've had is unbelievable. You're and not it, a gypsy, and are you? <laughs> you tell me about it. You tell me. But any, <laughs> any, any job I wanted, I got. Yeah. Any job I wanted, I got, irrespective of what the job. If I was called for an interview for a job, even before I go in, I know I'd have the job. <laughs> we'll figure that out. It didn't matter what the job was. As long as it paid well, I was all for it. Because yeah. at the time, work was scarce. Even, even the engineering side was scarce. And... Um, so, give you an instance that uh, I fancied becoming a, a, an intercontinental truck driver. Wow! I said, I said, "Wow!" I said, and I looked. I looked up the, the wages. The wages are fantastic, uh, and there's no one on your back. You can do what you, you're. You're free. You go off. There's no one to tell you what to do. And I fancied that, and that was one of the best things I've ever did. Yeah. I go. I travel all over Europe. We didn't have any sat nav at the time. <laughs> we, yeah. didn't have any more, we didn't have any mobile phones. So we, once you left, you wouldn't see it until you got back. <laughs> well, back in those days, we had the uh, the road map, a physical oh, road yeah, map. Oh, yeah, yeah. The A to Z book, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, and we go through London, you know, at horrific speeds. Yeah. No trying to... <laughs> we'd fly through London. London Bridge, I mean, it's not supposed to be... <laughs> We go over London Bridge when you're not supposed to. <laughs> but in our, you know, I talked about Arctics, you know, uh, 40, uh, what they call them, 16 wheeler now in America. <laughs> we, go, we go over that, the London Bridge, <laughs> in the middle of the night. <laughs> no, no wonder it fell down. <laughs> <laughs> so we knew London by the back of our heart, the back, yeah. like the back of our hand. It's, it's, uh, we know where to go all. How if we were getting uh, heading to Dover to catch the ferry? So it's, <laughs> it well, now, now that way. you've mentioned London, <clears throat> did I, I mention I, London? Oh, you did. You, you mentioned okay. London Bridge, so you, you mentioned. Yeah, okay, London. right. Okay, yeah. I, I feel, I I feel the story coming on. Yeah, come on. <laughs> <laughs> it's only brief. I've been there a few times. And it just never, ever resonated with me at all, London. Mm. I don't know why, um, but there are certain places in the world that you go and they just didn't resonate with me at all. So anyway, the big cities, you know, even Manchester, even, you know, where I was Mm. born, um, it doesn't resonate with me. Uh, Los Angeles, San Francisco didn't resonate. Yet when I came to Ireland, oh, it was like coming home. Oh, of course it is. <laughs> <laughs> but oh, unfortunately, God. that was many years ago before we ever met. So there you go. <laughs> mm. Who was lucky? That was a look- I, I, I had a lucky escape, though, hadn't I? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> or I might have been on that Jemison's bus. <laughs> oh, dear. Yeah. Okay, on a serious note. Um, It'll be today. Oh, it will, will it? Uh, um, okay. What got you started on the law of one? Because you, you've mentioned many, many times that you, you've, uh, you live by the law of one. And because I haven't actually studied it, um, into, in fact, I, I've not really studied anything because I'm not really a student other than oh, life. Don't... Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. Oh, 
<laughs> no, uh, how did I get stuck in the law of one? Yeah, I, I got stuck into the law of one uh, around the same time that David Wilcock came on the scene ah. many, 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 many years ago yeah. when, he showed, when he showed up with, um, on the radio. Where was it? Um, what was the name of the big American station? Um, uh, oh. If I knew it, I'd tell you. Right. Okay. What was the name of the show? Um, anyway, he, he came on the show and I used to listen to him. And it was fascinating. He used to have brilliant things to say at the time. Was it Art Bell show? Was it Art Bell? Yeah, I think it Art Bell, yeah. What was the name of the, what was the, name of the program? Oh, no, no. Come on. It took me uh, a while yeah, to get Art Bell. Uh, okay. Okay. <laughs> so um, at the time, he, um, David Wilcock, was far, far different than what the way he is now. Correct. <clears throat> yeah. And he, he gave out an awful lot of knowledge. But right from the off, uh, he used to speak with Kerry, uh, the Project Camelot at the time. I, I even remember him coming on that show at the very beginning. Yeah. But one of the things he, he, gave, he used to speak about a lot was the law of one. And yes. he put, he um, download a link for the, the law of one. So I clicked on the link and the law of one came up. So I downloaded all of the law of one. I said, I'm going to have a look at this, see what this is about. Yeah. And that was how many years ago was that? 20 odd years ago? And uh, uh, yeah, yeah. It might not be 20, but it's it's a long time ago, yeah. Yeah. Fado, fado, as we say in Irish. Long time ago, long time ago. There's your first, there's your first Irish word. Fado, 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 I was fado on every hour. Ah, anyway. That's where you're wrong. I, I did learn two sayings in Gaelic, but uh, that's the third. Okay, carry on. <laughs> what was the fourth one? <laughs> <laughs> hey, that, that was a cracker. So hey, we'll, yeah. we'll have a Mrs. Uh, Brown's Boys episode in a minute. <laughs> <laughs> come, come, come and wire up. So I, 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 down, I downloaded it. I'm moving on quickly because if I start laughing, I won't be able to stop. Yeah. Yeah. So the law of one, I started reading it and I just could not get enough of it. I really could not. Even though it's a hard, very, very hard uh, read. Yeah. Because the, um, the, the law of one is uh, a channel material from a source that they call Ra. Mm -hmm. And the, the people doing the interviewing, there were three people doing the interviewing. One was Carl Ruckert, Jim McCarthy, and Don Elkins, I think, the guys. So one was the channel, it was Carl Ruckert. She used to lay on the table and she used to bring, bring that in the, the raw. And uh, Don, Don Elkins was, the, was uh, the questioner. He used to ask the questions. But because he was from... Um, a very educated background. Uh, I think he, yeah, he went to university, had a degree. I, I, I think so. So he was asking very, very specific questions. Questions that you, would, you and I wouldn't ask in the form that he asked. It was all yeah. very high level. Scientific. Um, scientific from, 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 the, from that perspective rather than yes. uh, an everyday perspective. So right. it is... Right. And they would answer likewise in the same manner. So it's a very, very difficult thing to get your head around. Yeah. The car, why didn't he just ask that straight out and ask in a simple manner? So the question, the answer will come in a simple man, uh, manner and everybody's happy. But I think yeah. it was deliberate done that way. You know, it's only when people are actually drawn to it, will actually read it and stick with it, which is yeah. more or less the same with course of miracles mm -hmm. so when i read the law of one i just could not get enough of it because the concept and the thought behind it is a beautiful way to live that it's an outstanding way to live but as you get more into the law of one and you you take it on board what they're saying you, you take that on board what the law of one actually is and without living your life at that level you realize that um, 
they, they speak a lot about free will. They speak a lot about the um, the first what they call the first law. The first law of the cosmos is, uh, "Thou shalt not." Uh, you must honor free will. Do not interfere with free will. That is the first law. Do not interfere with free will. That's divine law, God's law, cosmic law, any law you want. Yeah. That cannot be interfered with. So yeah. that's yeah. that was the concept of the law of one, and uh, I've lived uh, with that in view. Well, I've I've actually. Um got the book A Course in Miracles. Um, uh, a very good friend of mine um, bought it for me. Um, and we talked about that earlier before we came on. But um, it was a very hard read for me because I I have the concentration. Yeah. <laughs> not not very not very much okay yeah. i yeah. like i like to be jovial i like to muck around be the class clown i like for me yeah that's that's um, you but i i mean i have my serious moments obviously but um i like to entertain it, it, you know it's there's something about my personality i just love to entertain but i teach through laughter so Although I might not be able to read and study the law of one and the course of miracles, I kind of live the principles in a way because of the people around me, because I believe that um, there are certain things that I do in life that is teaching people when I'm not really thinking about it because I mirror to them what they need to know. And I do it intuitively. So is that something that happens for you as well? Yeah, yeah I'm a bit like that. I, I would need, um, it would need, something would need to hold my intention because I would go wandering off. My mind would yeah. just go somewhere else. So I would really need to focus. And that's yeah. the difficult part because this thing is so, High falutin speech and all that, it's difficult to stay with the track. Correct. So, unless you're specifically drawn to it, and it's the same, by the way, with the Course of Miracles. That's yes. another extremely difficult book, but again, you have to be drawn to it. Like I was drawn to a Course of Miracles. By the way, in the Course of Miracles, not diversion for a second, is that there is no author to a Course of Miracles. Yeah. There's no author. It's transcribed. But it is originally from, <laughs> I had to go with this word again, Jesus, but was, trans was, was passing on these messages. Yeah. But you get that very quickly from the book, anyway, of who actually is talking, who is actually given the messages. Yeah. So you, you, you come across that, that this was uh, transcribed from him. He was given, all, all, um, he was teaching, of course, the miracles. It is a teacher's book. It's not a book to sit down and uh, have a nice jolly old read. Forget yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> you know, in fact, it's not that. In fact, I, f I did find that the parts that I did read, A Course in Miracles, was that it teaches you different principles and it also teaches you to, to love from the heart and mm -hmm. to cast aside the ego. Yes. Um, yeah. And it's the ego that brings us all down at some point. Oh, ego. I, I would love to devote, devote a lot of time, maybe not this time, to yeah. the ego. To the ego. It's a okay. I, I call it the monster with a thousand faces, the yeah. ego, because it certainly has. And what, it, what happened, the Course in Miracles teaches you about the There's over a thousand pages in the Course in Miracles. Yes. All right? It's a, a thousand thick pages. book. <laughs> Makes yeah. a handy door stop. Makes a handy door stop. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But, but uh, which reminds me, uh, the Bible, right? Yeah. I, I was sitting down one day and uh, I don't know if I got onto this, but I realized I, I, I was hearing a, lot about, hearing a lot about the Bible. Even though I was raised a Catholic, I never had the Bible. I never a Bible in the house. 
even in that house at home. Yeah. Didn't have a lot of that. So I was sitting down one day and um, I said, I'm going to get, uh, I'm going to buy this um, Bible and have a look and see what it's all about. This is only a couple of years ago. And uh, I bought it. I came home, opened it up, sat down. Well, I sat down and opened it up, whichever. So I was reading it. And I was reading it. And I was reading it. And I'm going, what the bloody hell? I said, this is a load of all <coughs> cards one up. <laughs> Mildly. So I had a book and I went bang. Whoops. <laughs> I threw the book and it bounced off the wall. <laughs> down onto the floor. And I was looking at it, I said, that's the best place for you. <laughs> the floor. Wow. Right? So um I went to the window, right? Well, I usually do my, I didn't realize I was meditating at the time, but I used to make my connection out that way at nighttime. You know, I would speak a lot to make the, make my, make the connection. And I said, I remember saying, here, I says, if that's you in the book, take a hike. I don't want nothing to do with you, pal. Take a hike. If that's you in the book. I don't want nothing I said to do with you. Take off. Yeah. I, I refrained from using expletive words. So I said, don't want nothing to do with you, pal. So I turned around. The book was still on the floor. And uh, I sat down. I sat down like this on the couch. And I was looking around and I'm saying, oh, now what are you going to do? <laughs> What's going to happen now? Was I realize it? Bloody hell. What now? But what I did was the leap of faith. I just done the leap of faith in order to find, I don't want to use that term God, but I think people are more used to this term God. I prefer to call him Father. He is my yeah. Father, by the way. So yeah. I prefer to use that term. But in order to find him, you've got to get rid, you've got to get rid, of, you've got to get rid of God to find God. So it's only then that happens when you take that leap of faith. Yes. Yeah. And, that's, that's, and I took that leap of faith and uh, never looked back. You see, if, if people are watching this and they listen to those words literally, they may not understand it, but I understand it from an intuitive point of view because you have to you have to accept all aspects of of yourself and life to understand it and that's very like, profound yeah it wasn't me it was someone up there that that directed i i, I, I know it wasn't you that's for that's for certain <laughs> no, <laughs> who's behind you who's behind me <laughs> well, that's your brain <laughs> I'm actually a talking puppet. There you go. <laughs> oh, how how the hell did that come in? Oh, okay, uh, back to normal. Yeah, back <laughs> to the Bible. Yeah, but, Look, but I, I, by the way, I don't want to offend anybody. If they're yeah. totally, actually, and that's something I would like to speak about also, if we have time. Well, speak away. No, finish what you're going to say. I've forgotten now. <laughs> I, I think, must be thankful for oh, small mercies, I suppose. Oh, yeah, okay, go on then. I was going to say the, the Bible is missing 16 books because they, I believe now, I, what year was it? Was it the 1600s? Uh, they took out 16 books from the actual Bible, didn't they? I'm not too sure how many, did, but I don't know the the ticket that I'm with it. Quite a bit. They left in certain bit. pieces to suit themselves. Correct. I mean, it was it was based on the Nicaea um, treaty at the time, not agreement yeah. in four. What was the year? Three forty-two. Yeah, somewhere around that. Uh, yeah. Mm. But, okay, I think we've realised what you've actually learnt from the law of one. So, mm -hmm. so why is it actually important to you? as an individual 
I because mean, it's a beautiful way to live. It's okay. an, an enormous way to you recognize you recognize who everybody is. Yeah. You also recognize who you, who you who you are yourself. And as a, but especially, they give a lot into people who are here now, and they describe the type of people who are incarnate on the planet. Yeah. And they refer uh, a lot of the time to wanderers. And they refer to wanderers would be star seeds, etc., uh, gatekeepers, life workers. They always refer to them as wanderers, people who came from up there to come down here to do a special job, to do a bit. And they already thought of them as wanderers. Interesting, because I I, re, I distinctly remember, uh, and I, I don't know how this even came into my memory, but I wrote this in my first book. Um, and how, how can I explain this? It's, um, yeah, it's, it's very difficult to actually put words to it, but Okay, I'm out there in the universe as a soul, no, not a physical body, but something happened on Earth. And I believe it was uh, Hiroshima, the atomic bomb on Japan. Mm -hmm. And out in the universe, that resonated big time. And there was a call out to certain what you call star seeds or whatever um they need help on this planet right now they need help please we need volunteers now i distinctly remember volunteering but i think what was so special about that significant event was that whoever was asking for the volunteers, it was as if they were saying, the kids have got the matches, it's dangerous. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah, yeah. Need help. I, plus the fact you didn't read the small print of the contract. <laughs> None of I us know. did. <laughs> Correct. We didn't, read, we didn't read the small, just fine print. Yeah. yeah I was going to get onto that, that you mentioned it, because I was born in 1945 in October of 45, which is Libra, which is the balance. I've always known my life that I always bring balance to a situation. Uh -huh. And the Hiroshima went off in August, I think, <clears throat> and Hiroshima and Nicosia. Uh, Hiroshima, Hiroshima and, and Nicosia, where was the, um, anyway, the second one, it'll come to me in a minute. Yes. And like that, the kids got hold of the matches. The, the earth was in danger of tilting. Yes, so it was. I came in in um, October. Bomb went off in a sep bombs went off in September. I came in in October, and I always knew I'd bring balance. That's yeah. my total lame has always been balance. Yeah. The, 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 the scales of Libra means that you can always see both sides of every story. Correct. You can see the argument from this guy's side, you can see the argument from that guy's side. And what you're able to do is bring the two sides together. Sometimes that leads you into a lot of trouble, but <laughs> you're always able to bring two sides. You can see both sides of the story, and then you've got to make a decision what to do. Yeah. So, yeah, that's where the balance comes in. But because the earth had gone so much out of balance, yeah. way out of balance, we needed to bring it back into balance. Correct. Yeah. And I got a swift kick in the ass and said, get down there and you know, see what you can do. So, so did, did you volunteer or did you or were you told you need to get down there quick? I I, I was volunteered. <laughs> <laughs> I will volunteer, but uh, yeah, that, that was basically, I can always see two sides to an argument, mm. two, two sides to a story, and trying to come down and see who's right and who's wrong is always the difficult part. But that's what well, goes with the territory. Well, I've got uh, a Libra mother and a Libra 
daughter. Oh. And believe it or not, my uh, uprising, although I was born in the sun sign of cancer, which is ruled by the moon, um, my uprising when the sun came up was in Libra. So I have a very strong Libra um, in my astrology chart. So That's not I, my fault. That's not <laughs> my fault. Don't, don't blame me for that. <laughs> you signed up, remember? <laughs> the fine print job. <laughs> oh, dear. Yeah, so that, that's an interesting uh, observation that uh, we mm. didn't know before. Yes. You went out half it, yes? Oh. oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, no one has heard all of it before. I've only almost scratched the surface. Okay. Even on the other, even on the end, other interviews, I've only always scratched the surface. So why do you only scratch the surface? Is it because there's so much to tell. There's so the, much to tell. Okay. So there's so much to tell. So that's mm. fine. We can we can take as much time as you like. You know, we can do it over a period of five months, six years, whatever. It doesn't matter. <laughs> can we can we end this now? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's um. Yes, it's time for a lot of truths to come out now. Yeah. I mean, I, 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 I've been giving all this knowledge, which was another thing. I've been given all this information, right? Constant information for year in, year out, constant inf uh, information or for like uh, insights, knowledge. Uh, I from knowledge comes wisdom. But I, I got all of these experiences and downloads that needs to come out. Yeah. And it, it, it's, there's an awful lot of stuff there. But I always kept wondering, why are you giving me all this information? What the bloody hell am I supposed to do with it? I mean, it's, it's all going to go to waste. I said, I've got all this knowledge. I'm not going to be done with it. Nothing, I said. There's going to be nothing done with it. Why was I wrong? <laughs> I was wrong. Well, when, uh, well, when we first met, I mean... I was the one that was public <laughs> and you were the private one. Um, and I, I, obviously I, I did a few interviews and, and, and wrote the first book and now I've got the second one on its way. Um, mm. I didn't particularly want to become public um, and I pretty much had a, a low profile ever since. But obviously uh, <laughs> I've got to be out there again. Um, because, you, like you say, you've got a lot of information to give. But uh, I feel most people that are intuitive or star seeds or have got a mission, they're all feeling that urge and calling to actually mm -hmm. do something. Now, yes. what, is, yes. what is that? So is there anything that you can enlighten people with? Because people move places... Uh, jobs, you name it, they're, they're going. Able. You really jumped. You really jumped in there, now, Mr. Kelly. You boy, I have. Boy, yeah. <laughs> hey, and, boy. And my I third, was hoping this. Oh. My third eye is itchy now too, so it's obviously important. We didn't wash it this morning, so you <laughs> kicked the hair out of your eyes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that was another thing, by the way, with Gabe Wilcock. He, he explained a lot about the third eye, the man yeah. the shape of the pine, pine cone and all of that. So um, <clears throat> that's a fascinating subject also about mm. the third eye there. So he was the first one. Did you know that in Rome, in the Vatican courtyard, the biggest structure that's in there is actually a pine cone? Is that right? Yeah, it's huge. It's huge. A pine and, and it's in a it's in a vase, but it's not a gen, it's a sculpture pine cone. And it I think it must be 10, 12 feet high, a pine cone. In a in a in a in a vase, you know, the sculptured vases, flower vases, well, this thing is huge. The vase itself is higher than a than a man, you know. So and then you've got the pine cone. So why are you there suddenly got a pine cone? Why a pine cone? Of all things they could have, a pine cone. I think it's also referred to as pine cones, pine, pine.
Pinecone Square. Right. But I was right. looking quite recently and I had the Vatican courtyard on it. So why haven't they explained exactly what they why they, what what's that doing there? Why have they got a pine cone? Why have they everything else in there but a pine cone? Oh a dirty shard of um, yeah, they won't tell people, will they? No. Do you know do you know that inside in the in St. Peter's Basilica in the, the, the Chochi Chochi in there? When the people are going in and out, right at the door, there's a statue of um, St. Peter. St. Peter, right? And because people are going in now, they, they rub the shoe, you know. It's a handy, it's a handy height, so they pull up and they, they rub the shoe. But do you know where that, that's, they got that. They removed that statue from the low, from the nearby, what was the name of it? Um, it was the, the Roman, Roman temple. Oh, cranky. But anyway, the, that was um, uh, that was called after. Um, wasn't, it wasn't Peter. It was, uh, oh, cranky. What was the name of the, the planet? Oh, but anyway, it was called after a planet. The name, cranky, the name was gone because I didn't, I didn't mean to bring this up, but it was actually removed from the pagan temple, the Roman temple, and put in there and they called the same Peter. Peter, wow. Peter, Peter. So that's where the, the stuff that you came from. So the stuff that goes on in there is oh, wow. Okay. Well, we've digressed from where we were heading. <laughs> Just because I, I, I did this, was that a deliberate avoidance of that, or, or did you want to touch that in another video? <laughs> heaven for, he, heaven gotcha. forbid that. I, I got you. See, you have actually, it's, um, yeah. This will take a bit of time. So, how okay. much time do we have? How much time do you have? We've actually touched on it already, but that yeah. it's, um, it will come up because I want to introduce a lot of stuff with it and not avoid and not deliberately avoiding yeah. it. Okay. I, I actually want to tell you, I, I really do, but. I just don't want to blot it out and say, well, what's all that coming from? What? There's nothing there to back it up. Okay. So this is why when I tell you, I wanted to have the stories to back up yeah. what I'm saying and, where, why, and why I am saying that. Okay. Because everything comes in down to this final moment. And we're not too far from the final moment, by the way. So we better get through the interviews then, eh? <laughs> yeah, more or less. <laughs> yeah, or less. Okay. It needs to be. It needs to get out there quickly. Yeah. Okay. So I'm not hedging. I don't want to just blot it out and have it lost. But I do want people to pay attention. When so I what I what I'll do, William, is uh, after we finish the first video, I'll I'll rewatch it and write down where I feel that we need to go into that in a, in another interview. Mm -hmm. um, but what like what I can do is change tack. Here we go, and talk about have you ever astral travel? Uh, a few times. Okay. <clears throat> I, I've, I've done it a few times. Um, I've also went through the um, night paralysis. I went through that. That's not a okay. pretty thing. No, I've had a. It ain't pretty at all. So um, I had to deal with that. And, but I, I want to try and deal with what happened. Uh, or do you want to touch that on what happened to me when I was in the hospital? I had to go to the hospital. Do you want to leave that? And I talk about the astral travel. So which, which one do you want to talk about? Um, yeah, I think we'll talk about the, the hospital in the next video. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, we'll what happened deal, there? Yeah. We'll just deal with the astral travel for now. Yeah. Because um, there was one or two weird dreams. Well, you see, this is the difference. You see, a dream is is like viewing it as a third party, mm -hmm. whereas astral travel is more like you're in control. You can smell. You can f touch, feel, taste. Um, and your, your, your senses are heightened big yeah. time. 
um, and you're very, very conscious of what you're doing and you're totally in control. That's how I would explain the difference between astral traveling and actually dreaming. Mm. So having said that, you, I believe you had one or two weird type dreams um, that took a fair bit of time to understand fully. But in those experiences, um, is there anything that you can remember that you'd like to talk about? In the dream, the dream side of things, or the I, I, if I miss astral travel, speak, the astral traveling is well, where um, where I leave my body and I'm flying. Yeah, I'm flying. Sometimes I'm horizontal like Superman, but other times I'm upright. And yeah. I, I can see, I seem to do that, but I can never go too high. Yeah. I'd like, I'd like to go too high, but I'm stopped from going too high. Yeah. I want to go way, way, way up there, but no. You have your limitations. You can, I can go to places. I'm flying, see things, um, and have interactions. So that would be the, the, um, the astral side of it, where I, where I am consciously flying around, either upright or horizontal, doing things. I can more or less, what, what I used to do first in order for me to fly, was that I, I had to throw myself forward, completely forward, right? And I'd come down that close to the ground, horizontal. Yeah. And then I would take off. But I knew I would never actually hit the ground, even though I would fall most of the way down. Throw myself forward, come down, stop, and I'm off. But lately, I can do it without having to do that. I can just stand up and take off, upright. So it's a, it's a fascinating. But then again, you have, I didn't have any point of reference yeah. as to what was going on. Well, when I, when I was younger, I actually um, read a couple of books on astral travel, and I always thought, wow, that would be cool to do. I'd love to do that. And then many, many years later, my sister actually said to me, she was learning to astral travel, and she floated up to the ceiling, and she was looking down on her body from mm -hmm. above, and she said, the next minute, there I am, floating around. <laughs> in the house. <laughs> you're, you're, you're at the bottle again, were you? <laughs> a, bit, a, bit, a bit like Casper the Ghost. <laughs> and, well, I'm at the Red Bull. <laughs> and I'm thinking, how the hell? Why didn't you tell me? She said, I didn't think you'd believe any of that stuff back then. Mm -hmm. Well, I probably wouldn't have. But the thing is, I actually knew how to do all this without realizing many, many years before I woke up to all this. Mm. So it's a, it's a fascinating subject, but it is. Found... And nobody told you how to do it, what you're no. doing, the way to do it. It just came natural. So you Correct. didn't, you didn't really need a whole lot of bloody books or a whole lot of toys Correct. Correct. in order to be able to do it. You just relied on your own self to do it. Yeah, and that's how I progressed. I'd never had anybody <clears throat> to tell me, "Oh, you need to do this and you need to do that," and this is how you do it. That's a load of B O L C K S that kind of thing, you know. Forget you it. See, isn't isn't that fascinating? How you're, you're stuck in this three D reality, and you're thinking, "Oh, I want to be cool. I want to do this," and yet your intuition and your higher consciousness is already saying. Mm. Hey, pal, wake up. You've already done it. You've already yeah. done it. Yeah. Don't be no. limiting yourself. Don't exactly. limit yourself. Don't limit yourself. Exactly. And you don't have to buy all of these fucking gadgets that everybody is trying to flog. Yeah. You don't need it. You don't need it. If I can do it, so can you. Exactly. Anybody can do it. Yeah. So can I get back to this? Um, yes. What do I call it? Um, no, memory's going. no um, sleep paralysis because I know a lot of people go through this yes. <clears throat> and it is a very very frightening experience 
I know the doctors and the scientists, oh, well, this is because of uh, circulation and all this, blah, 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 blah. Bullshit. They are, at least from my point of view, at night, I would wake up at night, unable to move. I couldn't move. The only thing I could move maybe was my eyes. You know, and mm. I would try to speak out loud so I could get, get my wife's attention to wake me up, to shake me so I can move. And I, I wasn't able to speak. I could mumble, all that kind of thing. And I'm aware that I'm mumbling and because I can't say her name or anything like that. I'll just be mumbling, but I can't move. So this went on for, the, I don't know, three, four, five times. But in the end, one night, it happened, and I'm there, and I, re- I know, I knew inst- instinctively what was going to happen, and I couldn't move, and I said, I've had enough of this crap. And I don't know, I don't know where I got the strength or the will to move, but I moved, and I sat upright in the bed, and I done that with my hands, pushed up right, I said, get off. I've had enough, yeah. Get off. And that was the last time that happened. I just pushed whatever was on me off of me, but I had to get the strength and the will to move, to sit upright, and it yeah. never happened since. Because obviously whoever it was, and it was something evil, never came back. That yeah. was it. That was it. So it's the will and the strength to sit upright, to assert yourself, do what you have to do, get them off, and if they, once they realize you can do this, they have no more control. They won't come back at you or interfere with you. And do you know what came to me just then when you said that? And, and, and it loops straight back to what we said before with the law of one. They're interfering with your free will. Mm-hmm. So yes. if your free will is to say, leave me alone, they have to. Yes. They're supposed to, but they have to, and in actuality, they they have to. And the the fact is, if people fear these entities and believe that these entities are going to do things, then that's what they manifest. But at the time, I didn't, I didn't, I wasn't aware of of these entities or what entities were. This is all new, all this new age stuff. I, I wasn't aware of any of that. No one is. You know? There were no books to tell me. There was no internet to tell me. Oh, well, well, this is because it is. I just knew there was something sitting on me. I didn't like it. I didn't like it one off. bit. I just pushed off. Get off. Yeah. I think I said, get off. Yep. That was it. And I pushed, I pushed my two hands like that. And that was the end of that. Because it's energy and vibration, it resonates. And you know when it's not right. Mm-hmm. You don't need to be told it's not right. You will know instinctively it's not right. Exactly. And why have we lost the instincts? Distractions. What's the score, Dermot? What's on the telly, Dermot? <laughs> <laughs> I have you seen know. the movie, Dermot? Um, have you seen the movie, Dermot? Um, have you read this book, Dermot? Um, oh, do you know how many times I get asked, oh, have you seen this movie? No. Have you seen this movie? No. Did you see that on the TV? No. <laughs> yeah. See, what the law of one teach you is um, <clears throat> not to be judgmental. You never get angry with anybody. You don't get angry with it. You, I know you're going... But I don't get angry. I do not get angry. Because again, I'm able to see what's what's going on. I don't get angry. I can view I can view both sides. I do not get angry. I don't become I don't judge anybody. I will never judge, make a judgment. Say, oh, see that guy? He's bad. I might make reference if someone asked me, I think of this guy, yeah. then I would give my interpretation of it. But yeah, the law of one teaches you to respect everybody. Yeah. Respect everybody. So that's it. Especially, I mean, there is a law um, 
what was it? Um, there is a, a lady from the Law of One who says, uh, I am here only to help. I am here to represent the one who sent me. I don't have to worry about what to say or what to do as the one who sent me will direct me. Mm. I will go wherever I'm needed to be, knowing he goes there with me. And I shall be healed as he lets me, as he teaches me to heal. So that is from the law of one. That is the law of one. Yeah. We are all one. Well, I'm still law, learning those lessons. Yeah, was that from the law of one? Or was that from the law of one? Or of course, in miracles. Yeah, that's from, that was from the law of one. I'm here only to help. And this is why I'm only here to help. Yeah. Okay, well, uh, we've been on for an hour and a half now, so I think we'll wrap this one up for now, and we'll mm. get we'll get back to uh, some serious discussions. Uh, and I look, it really doesn't matter how many videos we do; we'll just keep doing them till we unscratch the surface, so to speak. <laughs> All right, then. All right. <clears throat> yeah, if that's okay a... with you, sir. Oh. As long as upstairs, I have to take care of all that. No, okay. the head office. My head office. I refer to them as the head office. They do all the administration work. Yeah. They don't expect me to do all the work. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, I'll leave it at that for now and we'll resume this very, very soon. Okay. Thanks, Dermot. No worries. Catch you soon. Absolutely. Been a pleasure. <laughs>